Welcome to the Pachera Talks. Today we are going to understand what is the difference between private endpoint versus service endpoint. Both the endpoints we have explored explicitly in previous videos, but today we are trying to understand the difference when to use what and how uh, this has an impact on the security. Once we know the subtle difference between these two endpoints, it will help us to design and architect better from the security perspective. All right, so let's get started. Service endpoint and private endpoints, both designed to enhance security, connectivity between Azure Virtual Network and Azure Services. That's all we have learned in the previous videos. As you can see, Azure Virtual Network subnet, these are the Azure services, PaaS services. This is the internet. The whole idea behind this is we, who is trying to access from this virtual network, should not access like this from the internet, but utilize the Azure backbone to access like this, or create an endpoint here with private IP address and access from this. That is the subtle difference between these two endpoints. So they serve a similar purpose as you can see, but they operate differently and offer distinct advantages. And that's the topic here. That's what we, we will try to understand, okay? So as you have seen, the, the way I just showed you, uh, backbone or taking the entire app service into the private network. That's the primary difference. The primary difference, if I have to explain, primary difference between private endpoint and service endpoint lies in their network configurations. Okay. With private endpoint, both the virtual machine and the storage account have internal IPs, or, or network interface in the same VNet, right? Because if it's a private endpoint, we will take this service and get it into the virtual network and give it a endpoint or IP, private IP here, so that all the services can talk to this storage service via this private IP or endpoint. OK, ensure ensuring what will ensure the entire traffic remains entirely within the virtual network because we have bring the service in the virtual network. But in the case of service endpoint, we do other way around. <laughs> we take the virtual network and not the entire virtual network. For example, it is a private IP address and anyone can talk to this private IP address. Doesn't matter which subnet, if NSG allows, even from the on-premises, you can talk to this private IP address, which represent this service, okay? But in the case of service endpoint, it is a little different, right? You stay with me. Do not get confused, I'll show you. Only the virtual machine, let's suppose, with this subnet, let me remove the private endpoint here first. Let's suppose we have enabled the service endpoint for this subnet only. Okay. Only the virtual machine is equipped with the internal IP address. This would have the private IP address. Earlier, this storage was also having the private IP address and this VM is also having the private IP address and they're talking privately or the private, in, uh, private virtual network. But in the case of service endpoint, only the virtual machine has the private IP address. And it simply takes an optimized route and more direct route to connect to the public IP of the storage account. Yes, this is the reason I was trying to explain. Earlier, we were bringing this in the virtual network and assigning it a private IP address. So it's talking to the private IP address, which at the back end through the links, uh, private link, it talks to the Azure storage and we have blocked everything from outside. So it's completely private service, just like in your virtual network. But in case of service endpoint, it will go like this and talk to the public IP of that particular service, not the private. 
but it will use the optimized route route which is ms backbone or azure backbone that is the difference okay <clears throat> i hope it is clear in one we are just bringing the service inside the virtual network and assigning the private ip they are talking privately in the service endpoint we are just enabling the endpoint or one of the subnet for the particular instance so that it will take the optimized route to talk to the azure service particular service on the public ip but you have the network firewall to block the uh, all other traffic except the allowed one that's how they are different i hope it is absolutely clear now i have seen people getting confused in that all the time okay so it's time to talk a little more about it through some examples so that it will be absolutely clear for the new people for the fresh people who, are, who do not have that much experience in the in the production environment okay so let's take an example uh, consider a scenario where a company uses Azure Blob Storage to store application logs. By enabling a service endpoint for Azure Storage within the virtual network hosting the application, traffic from the application to the Blob Storage travels directly over the Azure Virtual Network. You can simply relate it. This is the storage. This is the VM. This will go like this, like this, over the backbone. So enhancing security and potentially reducing latency is utilizing Azure Backbone. Despite this, the blob storage endpoint is still accessible through the public internet. But access rules can be configured to only allow connections from the virtual network that can be done. This red line is representing the same thing, access rules or network firewall. So what are the key advantages we are getting? We are getting improved security by keeping traffic within the Azure backbone, no public internet routing, reducing exposure, and it's a free of cost. Private endpoint, however, if the same company decides to enhance the security and privacy of their Azure blob storage access, they can create a private endpoint for the blob storage. So what we'll do, we'll get this service here and assign a private IP, right? This assigns a private IP. Private IP in the private endpoint, right? To the blob storage service, making it accessible only from the from within virtual network or through the peered virtual networks or through the on-premises because it has a private IP now. We're not talking to the public IP of the, this, but the private IP. Okay. The storage service is completely isolated from the public internet, ensuring all access is private and secure. So what are the key advantage here? Well, it provides a private connection to the Azure service, fully isolating them from the public internet. It seems like more secure, right? As compared to service endpoint. Uh, enhance the security and privacy by ensuring all access to the services through a private IP within the virtual network. All right, cool. So let's talk about a few comparisons and use cases that might help us to cement the knowledge. I hope it is absolutely clear now. OK, the very first thing is security and isolation. Private endpoints offer a higher level of security and isolation compared to the service endpoints by eliminating any public internet access to the Azure service. We all agree on that point. So from the basis of security and isolation, there is a difference. And it's pretty clear. Then the service endpoints are scoped to a subnet within a virtual network and require configuring NSG rules for finder access control. Private endpoints, however, provide a dedicated network interface with a private IP address to the Azure service within the virtual network, simplifying access control. So we could all call it a connectivity scope, right? Then finally, which is uh, now sometimes, you know, all points gained by the private endpoint. So let me give something to the service endpoint, which is less complex than private endpoint. Why? Because private endpoint requires DNS integration for name resolution as the services exist through a private IP address. This often involves modifying DNS settings to resolve the service public host name to the private IP address of the private endpoint. Service endpoints use the service public DNS name, which results to the public IP address, but it is accessed over the Azure Backbone network. So 
DNS, uh, DNS is something which is different uh, in, in <coughs> complexity. All right, so let's talk about the single use cases uh, for service endpoint and private endpoint. When to use service, when to use private with uh, simple understanding. Let's say an organization looking to restrict access to the Azure SQL database only to its Azure hosted application might choose service endpoint. It's a straightforward way to ensure traffic remains on the Azure network without the need for full isolation from the public internet. The second thing, there is a charge involved in the private endpoint. It's minimal, but it is there. You cannot ignore them. Uh, for the private endpoint, a financial service firm. No, there's a difference. Now we're talking about a domain specific financial service from requiring maximum security and privacy for its Azure storage account accessed by both Azure hosted application and on-premises systems would benefit from private endpoint, no doubt about it. So they will choose private endpoint. It ensures that the storage account is not accessible from public internet aligning with strict regulatory requirements. So in summary, while both service and private endpoints enhance the connectivity and security between the Azure VNet and Azure services, the choice between them depends on the specific requirements for isolation, security, and access control within your Azure architecture. Well, that's all about it, and we are through with the endpoints. Well, thank you for watching, and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.